And welcome to Hannity. The train wreck that is Obamacare just got even more embarrassing for the president. Now, this after the administration revealed for the first time today exactly how many people have elected to participate in this fledgling program. And to put it bluntly, after three years of mismanagement and hundreds of millions of your tax dollars wasted, the results, frankly, are just a disaster. Let's take a look at these numbers. A total of 106,000 Americans have, quote, selected health plans since the disastrous rollout began. But that does not mean 106,000 people have enrolled. Actually, far from it. Now, remember, the White House inflated this total by including those who have merely placed a plan in their online shopping cart and have yet to make a single payment. Now, what's even more laughable, of the 106,000, only about 25% actually selected their plan through the federal marketplace on the website healthcare.gov. Ouch. Now, to put all of this into perspective, the administration expected nearly a half a million people to have enrolled, not selected a plan, by enrolled by this point. Now, just hours before this pathetic data was released, the House Oversight Committee grilled some of the government's chief technology officials about this epic, I mean epic, failure. I know that consumers using healthcare.gov have been frustrated in these initial weeks after the site's launch will undoubtedly continue to discover that efforts were taken to cut corners to meet political deadlines. We underestimated the volume of users who would attempt to concurrently ask, access the system at any one time. The biggest domestic policy program website in the history of this country ever is launched, and you didn't know about this? There are material failures in the security of the Obamacare website. The folks at the White House knew this thing had problems, evidenced by the testing that wasn't done end to end trying to understand what you mean by fully tested. It was tested in the court. Fully tested? Holy cow, this is like a new low. Hackers, in fact, may have already, or may soon, find those vulnerabilities. This, to me, seems to be the billion dollar question. Why didn't you delay this? You guys knew there were gonna be problems. And joining me now with more on today's hearing and to react to the administration's enrollment number announcement, the two men you just heard from, the chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Darrell Issa, Ohio Congressman Jim Jordan. All right, going on a couple of days, uh, Mr. Chairman, what, what is the average American to make of what you've heard today? Why don't you surmise the worst parts of this, what you've heard in the last couple of days? Well, this is one of the greatest management breakdowns one could find. We had in front of us the chief information and technology people working for the president on this signature project, and to a person, they would not take any responsibility. And in fact, when questioned, they couldn't even name the person who was responsible for this failure to launch. And one of the individuals, uh, Mr. Chow, implied that there wasn't a failure, that it sort of worked. Uh, of course, he wasn't one of the 100 that got in the first day or 240 or six that got in the first day or 240 that managed to sign up by the second day. So I guess he doesn't know what failure is. Yeah. All right, well, let's go to some of the risk issues because the fact that they launched this with navigators yeah. that had no criminal background check, we learned from Mr. Chow yesterday that there was a memo issued and they found prior to the launch of this two high risk issues and the memo said, quote, the risk the threat and risk potential to the system is limitless. Limitless? And he never saw this memo? How? He's the chief project manager for the Center for Medicare Medicaid Services? Congressman Jordan, how is that possible? Well, well I, I think what's even more scary is, Sean, someone did see it. Someone knew this system wasn't ready, and yet for political reasons, as the chairman said, they went ahead and launched it and put a millions of Americans' personal information at risk. And you know why they wouldn't delay it? For political reasons. They couldn't admit that Republicans were right, that this thing needed to be delayed. This law wasn't ready. It should be delayed. Frankly, it should be repealed. They, they didn't. They were willing to put Americans' personal information at risk because they couldn't admit, this administration couldn't admit, that Republicans were right, and frankly, most of America is right when they don't like this law and they want it changed. You know, Congressman Issa, I, I actually looked, they actually in the memo said the risk to the system is limitless. That was in the memo that yep. Mr. Chow, who should have seen this, didn't see. Federal guidelines actually define what high risk means, and they say the vulnerability could uh, be expected to have severe or catastrophic adverse effects of organizational operations, assets, or individuals. Who, who then bypassed no. the people that were supposed to know these things? Do, we, do, do you well, know the answer very, yet? 
Well, what we know is that the people who, who knew or should have known, in fact, just simply ignored it. And one of the challenges is Mr. Chow, for example, said he had never done an end-to-end -end security check and didn't feel he needed to. In other words, right. this is beta software. You put it up with your social security information, with your health care information, and then we'll find the bugs as they're reported to us. Uh, when asked repeatedly, well, is this as secure as a bank software? He could only say no software was completely secure. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I believe my bank software is more secure or I wouldn't be using it. Yeah, I mean, we all use, use online banking at this point. Um, so you believe, because of the testimony, do you I assume you believe that these guys told the truth before your committee. So if they told the truth, then somebody, someplace, somewhere kept this information from the people that were in charge. Is, is that a fair statement? What, 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 what we think is the people we need in front of the committee, actually the people who from the White House told us aren't going to come, so we may have to push them a little bit and, and, and the chairman subpoena them. But that's Nancy Ann DeParle and Gene Lambro. They're the political people at the White House who ran this entire operation. So they They're the ones who had the weekly meetings at the White House for how you're going to implement the Affordable Care Act. Those are the two individuals who need to come answer these questions. And specifically, why did you launch something? that someone in the administration knew was not ready. They Why did knew, you put millions of Americans at risk? And they never told the technology people in charge. Does, does this sound similar to July of 2010? Uh, if you go back to the November 2nd edition of the Wall Street Journal, uh -huh. they did a report on how the White House in the summer of 2010, Congressman Issa was debating internally whether or not they knew that people would, would not be able to keep their plans. They were debating internally whether to tell the American people and decided against it. Are those the same political people that you would think were responsible here? Think those, so. those and more. And there's no question at all that a decision was made not to be honest with the American people about keeping their plans. And in the rulemaking process, this administration made matters worse. But most importantly, this is an administration that doesn't need, seem to be able to find out about problems in advance and fix them. If you will, they do a good job of reading teleprompters. They do an awful job of actually reporting when there's a problem to the boss and fixing it. And, you know, when people talk about delaying Obamacare, here's an important thing. Just the personal tax, just that if I don't sign up tax, is over $300, $300 million a month. The administration right now is dealing with a cost of delay that if they'd done their job right, they wouldn't have. Oh. And I think that's one of the reasons the president is resisting it is he wants that revenue. He wants that you're being forced into it. And if he takes that off, he's afraid he won't hit his goals. Uh, well, well, what's amazing about this at every level, there's, there's nothing but an epic failure. I want to play for you. This is the Health and Human Services a Chief Information Officer, a guy that testified before your committee, Mark Bateman. And Congressman Chaffetz of Utah was asking him how many times he's met with Sebelius. This kind of shocked me, and I want to get your response to this exchange. Since the end of August, how many times have you personally met with Secretary Sebelius? I'm not sure. Probably once or twice. And when was the last time you met with the Secretary? Um, I believe that um, it was during the shutdown the secretary had regular meetings with senior leadership. And you, so you met one, one time in October? I believe so. So you've met one time with the, so you're the chief information officer, you've met one time in October with the secretary. Maybe once or twice? Does, does that make sense to anybody? No. no. Sean, you got to remember, this is not about competency. This is not about getting these things right. This is about politics. That's why the political wait, 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 people ran the operation. We spent hundreds of millions of dollars. I know. They that's had three so years to put this together. I agree. I, I've had that's guys what's on so this frustrating, program. But that's, that's the only conclusion you can reach. All right. And, they, you know, and by Hannity, the way, there's no Sean, guarantee it'll be working by November 1 as they promised. We learned that today too, right? Well, the track record on keeping their word is not too good, so yeah. I mean, we'll see. Nobody yeah. was willing to say outright that it was going to work. They were mostly talking continuous improvement. But right after November 30th, we plan on having another hearing for just this reason. I, you know, why people put their faith and hope in government is unbelievable. We have 5 million Americans now that have gotten cancellation letters. Only 106,000 have signed up and only, what, 28,000 that signed up on the website. This is... This is bad. All right. Thank you both for uh, digging you. deep. We appreciate it. I think the American Thanks, people Sean. need to know this. Still ahead on this busy news night, Ann Coulter will join us. Senator Rand Paul is here. Bob Beckel, Andrea Tanteros, and much more. But first, tonight.
you know, we said from the start uh, that uh, or, that it was going to be important uh, for us to be consistent in saying to people, if you can have your, if you want to keep the health insurance you got, you can keep it. All right, this bumbling, stumbling speech was delivered in front of GOP lawmakers in January of 2010. And now, House Republicans, they are enlisting you, the American people, to force the president into keeping his word. They're going to have a vote on this later this week.